Greetings and welcome back to Becoming a Published Author is Fun. And if that doesn't make any sense to you, check out episode 8 where I explain it. In episode 27 is where we are right now. And we are going to be looking at three things. Three things I believe you should do right from the beginning, right from the start. So let's look at them. First of all, the word business. You may not consider yourself a business person, but when you start selling your books, guess who's going to consider you a business person? It's the government. Uncle Sam and his little nephews. Uncle Sam, obviously, is the federal government. Little nephews, there are 50 states out there. Some of them will charge an income tax. Some of them will do a sales tax. Either way, they're going to want their fair share. So they think of you, the moment you start selling your books, as a business person. So which do you want to be? There's two possibilities. You can be a person who doesn't do anything about this. You just sit down, you write your story, you write the perfect story, you get it published, and then you start selling it. And then one day you hear a knock on your door and uh, somebody says, well, we're from the government and you owe us money. Now, likely they're not going to be coming to your door. Most likely you're going to get an email or some kind of a notice and then maybe inviting you to their office. Uh, but the thing is this, they're going to say, you, you you've been selling books. Where's our fair share? You didn't report your income. You didn't, uh, on your income tax that you did, you didn't report this, or you improperly reported it. You didn't file the proper forms. You didn't do this, you didn't do that. And you, you end up, you could end up with a, a, a lot of fines that could really break your back, so to speak. That's one scenario. The other scenario is this, you go in, and you get yourself ready. And then when that, when that day comes and you start selling taxes or selling books and you have to report your taxes, it's all, you're already there, you already know what to do, and you do it and you don't even hear anything from them. The first three lessons of the best and basic author's training course deals with this subject. The rest of the course is strictly to do with writing. And getting published in marketing but here in these first three lessons you will learn about the different options you have you can be a, co a corporation you can be a limited liability corporation you can be a partnership or you can be a sole proprietor and it go, go those three lessons go into that those three lessons also go into other aspects of being a, a business person how it impacts your banking your your website your overall, everything that has to do with your business is critical information that you need to have. And uh, it's not necessary to, to, to for graduating the course. You're not going to be graded on it or anything like that. But you will have that knowledge at your fingertips, whether you choose to use it or not. I would advise that you save it, download the stuff, save it on your computer, print it out, whatever works for you, and act on it. Be better to do it now and be ready for when they come or when those uh, moments come than to wait until all of a sudden you suddenly need to have the right documents and the right uh, finances and everything in place so that you can respond to whatever the government demands. So that is a very important. And so they look at you but as a, government, as a um, business person. But what about you? The self part here. You should consider yourself a business person. You're going to be buying uh, stuff, um, paper perhaps, printer, computer, uh, other aspects of writing that you will need to buy. Well, shouldn't you know? Uh, how to do that, what you need as a business person. This is not something you're doing just for your to playing games on computers. This is something you want a computer that you can use for your business. 
you want to uh, go out there and get one. For instance, you could go out there and has uh, one that's for gaming. You can go out there and get another one that's more attuned to using documents, uh, doing research, and, and things of this nature. You have to know that that second one is more important to you than a game. And you can, you're going to need to know the difference. If at least to ask somebody to, and tell them what your needs are, and then they can point you to the right version uh, of computer. Now, you don't have to take them verbatim. Their chances are they're pushing something. And so you got to take that into consideration. And you look for the computer and uh, associated equipment that best suits your needs. Basically, what you want to find out from them is what you need. Then you determine if, whether the product they're particularly pushing is one that you want. Uh, so, but you want to look of yourself as a self pub, uh, as a business person. Now, this also takes play, uh, it impacts your your connection with other people. Um, when you're going to buy something, you want to go in there and you want to look like a business person. Don't go in there with jeans. Um, if you're going into some place and you're going to be uh, dealing them with them as a publisher or as an author, then you need to go in dressed appropriately. Now, right now, I have on what I would call um, business casual. I can wear a tie with this shirt if I want to. Uh, and if you're going to go meet people, it might be a good idea to have a tie on. You don't have to. But even if you were to see me right now, I'm in, you might say, business casual. You, but you want to look nice. You want to look, uh, you don't have to look stiff. You don't have to look like some flamboyant, uh, successful businessman that flies all over the world. You don't need that. But what you do need to do is have a professional attitude, a business attitude about yourself. So that it's not playtime. You're, you're serious about what you're doing, what you're saying. You, you want to communicate to them a particular need that you have. Or if you're marketing, uh, you want to be able to promote your product in a business fashion. So the government looks at you as a business person. You should too. That's the very first step. Now let's go to the second one. Start writing now. You don't have to wait until later. Now, some um, people who have courses may teach you that. Don't start writing until I tell you to do so. I do not do that. I want you to start writing now. Even, you, you could actually start writing now before you ever sign up with basic authors training. So why do I say that? Because here's the now part. Do you have a concept for your book? What's, what's the concept? It's an idea. It's a spark. It's a uh, something that germinates in your mind. You haven't got it all nailed down yet, but it's a, just a concept. Write it down. Put it in a computer file or, or uh, write it on a sheet of paper, but write it down. Well, if you know the concept, have you started your plot yet? Well, what's a plot? Think of it as an outline. It don't have to be in the form of an outline, but think of it as an outline. You start, a middle, and a beginning. John sees Mary. John likes Mary. John asks Mary out for a date. And eventually, at the end of the story, hopefully, it starts like it goes, John marries Jane. You see, or I guess I was using Mary before, wasn't I? <laughs> that would be an interesting story. But we go to whoever he if, he, if it was if it was Mary, then he marries Mary. The thing is that he gets to the you have a plot, an action that takes place in, in an orderly fashion. And again, you can do it as a an actual outline, or you can just write it down in paragraph form or whatever. You need to have a plot that you can follow. 
that plot is going to stick with you. Now, the thing is, as your story grows, you may want to go back and edit that plot a little bit, expand it, and so it reflects the story. And you can either do that first or in reaction to your story. Sometimes characters will take the story into directions that you hadn't originally planned. Well, as an author, you can either accept that or reject it. If you accept it, then you go back to your plot, build that into there so that your plot is always sort of the overall view, summary, if you will. Out, I like the term outline. But so that you have something that you're following. Now, that outline can just be in your head. I, I'll have to admit, I don't always write it down. I have it in my head, though. But sooner or later, it gets written down somewhere because it, as the story grows, it's going to be harder and harder just to keep it all up here in order that you can remember. So you want to have the concept and the plot. Step number three is grow. You need to grow as a writer. And that means you never know it all. Some people think, well, I've written a book. Well, I've made it now. Well, let me tell you something about myself. I'm going to do a little bragging. And, uh, and uh, sort of like Paul, he says, I'm going to play the fool and brag. Well, I'm going to play the fool and brag right now. I have written at least 15 books. Some are novels, some are nonfiction. I've written different sizes of them. I've had some that were 400 pages and some were only 80 pages or, or up to 100 and 120. Uh, I've written uh, on different subjects. My novels were based on books of Genesis and I, uh, some of my nonfiction, are, they're based on the Bible, they're doctrinal in nature. I've written a lot. I've been writing since 2000, well, I actually started writing in 2000, but I've been a published author since 2003. So that's a long time. That's over 20 years. We're talking going on 21 years now. And the thing is, I still don't know it all. I'm still learning. I'm learning from other authors. I belong to Christian Authors Community Services. Look them up. Check them up. And uh, uh, there's, you should be able to do that on Facebook. And you find them as a group and ask if you can join. It's, it's um, I believe the fee is $25 a month. Uh, uh, the I'm not sure about that for new uh, um, people who join, but that's what it was. And if it is higher, it's gonna, not going to be that much higher. But the thing is, it's worth every cent you pay. Why? Because you get to meet other people, other authors. I've developed some friendships through this organization, and I learn from them. I have a friend who's an, well, most of the ones I'm, I know on there are authors. This one lady, she's an author. She's my friend. We've never met. But I consider her a friend, and she considers me a friend. There's another guy who's from Michigan, which is where I'm from. So we have a connection right there. We are friends. I, he, I believe he's written my, I read my books, and I've read his. The, the thing is, you interact with these people, reading their books, uh, and you can even rate them if you want to. Uh, there's another person on there that I consider a friend, and he is an illustrator. Uh, so he can actually take and, uh, and create a book cover for you if you want. That's his business. Uh, I'm not sure, but I think he's also written a book uh, I'm not sure, of his own. Uh, but he does these books for people, he do book covers, and he does interior from whatever everything I've uh, been able to learn. There are others on the, in that group at different stages of writing. We're not just located in um, the United States. There's some that are overseas. Uh, so the thing is this, it's a group of people who interact. Now you don't have to join this particular group. You, there might be one in your town that you can join. Uh, I like this one. Uh, 
we've developed, like I said, we've developed some friendships and we communicate on the computer all the time and we get insights into one another's lives. And so you develop a friendship and you grow as a author and as a publisher. And in my case, I'm growing as a coach. That's where I found my coach is, is in that group. And I have this group of coach who guides me and directs me, helps me, and I teach that you should have a coach. I am a coach myself now, and I teach that you should get yourself a coach. Now, if you're in the course, you've got me as your coach. But let's say, go forward a little bit, and you finish the course. Well, then you can start coaching somebody. The thing is, you never know it all. You constantly are learning, passing that information on to others, and they're passing information back to you, and you all of you start you, you, you grow. It's a very important part of getting started and continuing as an author. Keep learning. Go way right along with that. Keep learning. I, you might have heard me uh, tell people, do the research. Do the research. Well, that's part of learning. I didn't learn to be do the research as an author. I first learned to do the research when I became a Sunday school teacher. And I had to go into the Bible, study the Bible, learn the lesson material that they provided. And usually I would go a little bit deeper uh, than what they might have required me to go to for that lesson. But I did. I learned more. Every time I tried to teach something, I always learned more. And you could say I might... My uh, awareness of that actually went back to where before I ever became a Sunday school teacher and I observed teachers, uh, whether it was uh, the Bible or something secular, they always learn more. So uh, I think, in fact, the way I started teaching was to learn more for myself at first, to learn, to, to learn more. You know, that's how I said to learn more so that I could communicate truth to my students. And I adopted that method of thinking of, well, if I learn more than I'm going to give, then I'll be giving good content, good instruction to these boys. I, I taught a boys class. And so I would be, I always used that kind of thinking. And then I found out, wow, I learned a lot more than I actually gave out. And it benefited my life. It benefited me as a Christian. It benefited me in so many different ways. Well, as an author, you keep learning. Keep learning. And then you get down to repeat. What does that mean? Right back to here. Am I, being, am I looking as a business person? Am I writing? Uh, okay. You're, by that time, you're past the concept and plot. You're into the story itself. So, unless you're starting a new book. And am I growing? Keep learning. Keep growing. And if you're doing that, you are on the road to being a successful. I'm not talking dollars and cents. That A lot of that has to do with your marketing as well as your the genre you're in, the... the um, how well you write and stuff like that. But what I'm talking about, the real success for, for any author, is be able to look in the mirror and say, and hold up a book and say, I wrote this book. And to say it with pride. It's a journey. And it's a journey you should be able to pat yourself on the back every once in a while to remind yourself that you have done that. You're the one who has written that. So that's it for today. I will be seeing you in the next episode.